Hello and welcome to Waffle TV. I'm Alice Groot and I'm here with Luke Benson, who is performing Backseat Hero, his show at the Edinburgh Fringe. Hello Luke, how are you? I'm really well, yeah, how are you? Good, good. Are you enjoying the Fringe? Yes, yeah, brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Is it your first Fringe? It's my first, oh well, first time doing an hour. Um, I've done showcases the last couple of years and this is me the debut solo show. Okay, wow, fantastic. How's it been going so far? Lovely as well, yeah. I, I, I don't have like, a lot of misery to expel. Uh, yeah, rooms have been good. The show's nice, and uh, yeah, I'm happy just just getting better. Really, just getting used to doing an hour of yeah. Corbin with uh, not going do that. Not, uh, not too many heckler problems or anything like that. No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, there is like a constant danger of there being one heckler who might sort of kill me after the gig, mm. but that's just because of the nature of the show, really, and the fact that like the guy. Who it's about is still at large. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so. uh, yeah, I heard the show is inspired by a stalking experience. It? Yeah, it's based on, I was inspired by, uh, I was being, I was in like a road accident and I got hit by a cab driver. I got hit into a cab driver uh, and then he sort of stalked me for like a little while afterwards. Good times. I know it sounds oh like comedy gold, but that's like pretty much what it is. Yeah, oh so, but, yeah. Uh, so he might turn up, that would be amazing. Like, if you want to be at any of the shows in the room, <laughs> you want to be at that one here, you want to sort of, because people are reckon there will be a moment, a quite a big moment where people think it's just part of the show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that sort of awkward, actually, frozen yeah. moment when like, he's really written this one, I mean, he looks, he actually looks scared up there. I mean, is that, how do they do that with, I didn't think he'd have fake blood, I mean, that is very hard. <laughs> he's not moving, no, he's not moving, move. should we go and get, no, no, do you know what I mean? Tommy Cooper, do you know what I mean? That would be like, would be very funny indeed. <laughs> yeah, but so, like, I hope that doesn't crash. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not the only one. Yeah, I mean, it's early in the run, but I'm not wishing for that. So, have you been preparing for this moment, like any kind of taekwondo I've training? Been doing, I've been doing um, martial arts. Yeah, I did uh, Wing Chun, like snake and crane kung fu. Like, uh, so where what happened like a couple of thousand years ago? Where this monk went in the river and he saw a snake fighting a crane. And the crane kicked its ass because it's an industrial object and it just dropped a big ball on the snake. So you would rule it, don't mess with the cranes. Uh, and I did, uh, I did do a ninja suit, but I'm not really looking to have a showdown with this bloke. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> but, I wouldn't be ideal. But I, I mean, you're, you're six foot seven, so surely yeah. he's not. Can he intimidate you? Like yeah, if, he, if he's got. I mean, that's the thing about giant folk, right? Um, we're susceptible to things like slingshots. And if you've got an axe, you can maybe have a go at the beanstalk. Like, um, they're pretty difficult to get a hold of in Edinburgh, but he could take me down if you wanted. So it's more like attacking long. Yeah, and yeah, we could, we could get our David Goliath on um, if you want. This is sort of, it became like one of those wrestling things where they're trying to press the fight. He can come if he wants, he can bring his slingshot, he can find me at Pez Coy at point five, I'll be in the igloo. <laughs> It's the challenge yeah, of going down. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Taxi for one. <laughs> <laughs> but all the time, kind of with the hope that he just never shows yeah, up. Yeah, do you know what I mean? We've got quite me measly techs as well. Do you know what I mean? Quite sort of little people. Like, so I can't see them like, going, I'm going to take a bullet for Benson. He brought in sweets on day one. <laughs> do you right, know what I mean? yeah. They're just going to watch me take a killing. <laughs> Have you thought of investing in a bodyguard or anything like that at your shows? Oh, I don't know if you know how expensive Edinburgh is, but I sort of uh, cut costs on bodyguards and yeah. put it into flyers and stuff like that. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fair that enough. was a toss up. I thought I'd do that, and I thought that's why I've gone for like a safety minded venue. Like, it's a kid's venue. Okay. It's not a kid's show or nothing. <laughs> but I'm in like an inflatable igloo, it's like a bouncy castle turned on its head. Right. So like, if he tries to throw me through the wall, uh oh, oh I'm okay. just going to bounce right back at him. <laughs> Close, did he, did like, you think of that? He didn't think of that. I, I planned it Step in. Step ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, do you know what I mean? I've got like a little button, and if I push it, then all the seats fall in. Uh, <laughs> take a little ball pool, and there are like there are actually bean bags. These are always bean bags at the back of the room because they do kitchens during the day. So it's probably not what you want when you want your first venue at Edinburgh, but it's right. Safety first. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but if he comes in with like a pin. So you could, you could ruin the party that, for that, everybody. That, yeah, I can see things going rapidly downhill. Yeah, if it, yeah, you know, yeah, it's really let the air up there. Mm. Let's hope he doesn't prepare. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and so you're a Geordie, and I'm Australian, and I have no idea what that means. But right, that's okay. Um, we, a Geordie that comes from um, this part with King George, and uh, he, was, he was 
uh, you have pigeons, right? They're like big in the north, so you have pigeons and he, um, you like football. So what we did was Jordy's like mimic that. That means they're from the northeast of England, from a place called Newcastle. Okay. Um, and so I think there's what is it? I don't think it's too dissimilar to like a uh, place in Australia. There's a thing called a Tyne Bridge. It's like a bridge over the River Tyne. It's a very similar naming system. And uh, that's the one that the Sydney Bridge is based on. Okay. Where they just sort of borrowed that uh, engineering and applied that. And there's a place called Newcastle in Australia as well. Yeah, we've got one of those. Yeah, are there people in Newcastle called Geordies in Australia? No, 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 we don't, we don't. Do you have people in, like, so what would you call someone from Melbourne? Melbourne. Melbourneite. Melbourneite, yeah. yeah. So are there any, like, odd ones that have no we're not, we're not incongruity exactly. with, yeah, yes, I think you guys do you know what I mean? So, like, people from Sydney could be called, like, I don't know, the Forgers or something. Wow. Yeah, there's none no, of that. I mean, you should, you should have that spreading some Because we've got that, do you know what I mean? So, well, I guess, like, what, like, Liverpool, I don't know how long you've been over here, what your awareness is of our national, because uh, we're, like, a really small country, mm. but we've got a ridiculous number of dialects and different people and all. So, like, Liverpool is uh, their scousers, that's what they're called, right? Now, you could not look at the word Liverpool and be like, oh, yeah, I can see scouts in that, that totally makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, the people no, from no. London, they're called Cockneys. Right, there's no system for that, right? It's not like, I don't know how I can be on the show, but it's not like the had cocks come out of the knees no, or no. nothing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, so I don't really know no, how that would work. Like, really people from Manchester are on, they're called Manx, do you know what I mean? There's a bit of logic there, it's yeah. first four letters. Um, but they're not particularly manky people, do you know what I mean? So it's quite an unfortunate nickname we've got. Scots are called jocks. Where do you get that one from? Huh? Do you know what I mean? They don't wear jock straps, it's all barren, all framed, or they killed. So, oh, uh, that's off. a good answer to the Jody question I yeah. gave you there, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's a, the clarity now is... is yeah, it's clear, clear as most. <laughs> thank you. And could you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about sort of what brought you to Edinburgh and what got you into comedy? And well, what brought me to Edinburgh was a train. They've got them in Australia. And um, what, I, right, what brought me to Edinburgh was, I, I thought I'll do my first hour this year, I've done a couple of showcases, it just seemed like the right thing for me to do. And also, I had this story, or I have this story, and I thought, right, I'll tell this, because hopefully it's the only time I'm going to have to go through something mm. like this, and I'll have the bit of catharsis, and I'll be able to hang my jokes around it. And I got into comedy, because I got sick of all of the easy women and free booze incomes. Right. Wow. <laughs> and how are you finding comedy? Is that oh, playing the girls? No, no, I, I, got, I got tired of all that. I wanted to clean my life up, so I thought I'd get into comedy. And then it's all early nights and um, everyone's focused. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's great fun. Good. I mean, a serious minded chap like you. It's just, it's just, it's just got like loads of. I mean, it's, as a default, you're going to have funny mates. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's always, it's certainly always a laugh. You know, if you go to a gig and you see me, it's in Edinburgh, mm. it's incredible because it's like sort of, I don't know what it'll be like. It's like, it's, it's, it's like a trade fair or a shop window or something. But it's like you've just gone to, I don't know, a holiday, so you've got it like, where would you go if you were in Australia, Mexico or somewhere? And uh, all your mates are there, do you know what I mean? They've all got stuff to do in the day, mm. you know, they're all like working in chalets or something, bollocks. But you get to hang out with them, do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. just fantastic. Yeah. That refining your craft is, I guess, what you need to do as a comedy. Mm. And comedy, was that something like, that was, was more so entirely the, the free booze? Oh, yeah, I got into comedy. Like, I met, um, I should really write a funny answer to this, but I got, I met a comic at a party, right, uh, when I was working in the finance. And uh, I was just sort of being a bit of a wise ass with him and his mate and this guy like, works for John Lizzie, top comic, he's on at the Gillard Blue this year. I got my room again and he recommended a comedy course and I did the course at the Amusements comedy course, um, R.I.P. Right, not R.I.P. Right, uh, limited as well. And uh, that was it, like from the first week, like me and a few people on the course went out and started gigging uh, just because it built a showcase and we didn't want to be crap at the end. And uh, that was it, do you know what I mean? I was like, this is what I want to do, yeah. you know. And, uh, it's just a wonderful thing to do, like, mm. it's learn so much and see so many brilliant things. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, can you tell us why Edinburgh audiences are going to love your show? Um, because it's a silly show about a serious thing. Um, it's got tons of jokes in it, and uh, I think it's some dancer. And until you see, like, a Danny Longlegs in a lumberjack shirt, get his James Brown on, I don't really think you've lived. But yeah, it's, a, it's just 
it's, it's, a, it's a good story, I think. It's got like a story that sort of sells itself. I don't know, that's not what you want to do. Because you just asked me, sell it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's, just, it's a silly show about a serious thing, obviously. And I think because the subject matter is so like, ah, are you all right, that <laughs> It's become a dafter show because of that. And uh, not like it, and, and rooms like it, and that's all that I would wish. That's what people are coming and have a nice time. Okay. Laugh at my pain. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Luke. Thank you. Uh, absolutely pleasure. Cheers for having me. Thank you. And you can catch Luke's show at 8.45 at the Pleasance Courtyard until the 26th. Thank you. I'm Alice, and this is Waffle TV.